Humans introduce risk, frankly. They're, they get tired, they get bored, they get stressed, they get worried, they get anxious. They, all the things that affect the way a person's thinking will affect the work they do as well. But machines don't have feelings. They don't get bored, they don't get tired, they don't get hungry. They just do their job. From what we've seen looking at uh, a few different factories, such as Hytera and some of the others, it seems that automation is going to re replace a lot of the jobs that are done by humans at the moment. It seems like it's an inevitability that you can't fight against. There's a lot of fear about automation. This is not new. I think we've, I mean, we've had this since the Luddites smashed the cotton gins many hundreds of years ago. Production lines for cars decades ago went through this process of changing over from using humans for assembly to using robots. Now that same thing is happening in China, where factories are going from rows of humans doing assembly to robots doing the assembly. AI and automation may end up taking a lot of jobs, but hopefully, as we've said in the past, we think all our jobs are going to disappear with the new advancements. Hopefully, it's going to be the same for this time where we actually get it wrong and there are new jobs that spur off these things. I think that there's always going to be a vision of the future that involves full automation and concepts like drones delivering all our parcels, robots doing all our housework, everybody kind of living a life of leisure while, while all of these things are taken care of. Historically, ideas like robots doing all our housework have been around since at least the 50s. The Combine Harvester is one of the most powerful robots uh, humans have ever made. It used to take hundreds of people days to cut down the hay in a field and rake it and turn it into, into bales to harvest wheat. We now do it with a single machine and the driver these days doesn't even have a hand on the wheel. The steering's all uh, satellite control. We've been automating for a very long time. It's easy to overstep the speed at which these things will become ubiquitous. Maybe there is an end point where every parcel is delivered by drone, but in most parts of Australia that's not going to be happening anytime soon. Yeah, a lot of people go, oh no, my job can never be automated. Way. Automation, AI will definitely replace a lot of jobs for people. All of them. I think it's inevitable. The figures are frightening. You look at somewhere like the United States, out of the 50 states, 45 of them have truck driver as the most common job. One state has primary school teacher, not a job that's likely to disappear. One has secretary, that's almost certainly to go. The other three have computer programmer as their most common job. When it comes to jobs or, or, or tasks that involve uh, strength or speed or accuracy or, or just you know, going definitely about sleep or rest, clearly robots automation is doing quite well there. It's a feedback proposition as well so when you make a machine that does a job imagine if you made a machine that made machines so you, you have a machine that makes the six-axis robot arm and that machine is a six-axis robot arm so a machine is making itself and the longer you let that run you build up a stock of machines that can make more machines and you get better and faster and cheaper and it will not be that difficult for someone to just purchase the manufacturing capability they want either they purchase the factory in a box themselves you can buy a, a shipping container with 26 axis robot arms and suddenly that becomes a real proposition where you can say I'm not going to have any people at all on my line I'm going to set up a brand new line I'm going to use open source hardware off the internet and I'm going to buy cheap robot arms that are manufactured in China for instance or they go to any number of contract manufacturers who have that capability. You can start completely removing humans from the loop. There will be fewer jobs, fewer of the more menial jobs in the future. It's obvious that you'll never have quite as many people employed once technology takes a lot of those people out of the loop. We've seen this coming for a long time and every generation fears that computers will take their jobs and it hasn't happened. I suspect sooner or later it will. After seeing High Terror, seeing they've got 75%, they said that was 75% of a possible 80% automation. One of the things that really stood out for me when looking at this automated line was at the start of the line we came past was a cabinet which kind of had a set of glass doors and the robot was behind it and at the bottom it said operate a forbidden engineer only and it sort of really spoke to that this line was an automated line and that it was you know all about the engineers being able to set up the automation and drive it. I think if that had been my first experience or if that had been my only experience of Chinese manufacturing you would feel overwhelmed because you can't look at that system and say well, we can replicate that. It's very clear that there are layers and layers and layers of things going on and this manufacturing process had started with well we'll get this bit right you know just the line then we'll automate one section and then we'll get that right and then we'll automate the next Section. like this was so many layers of automation and process optimization that you it really did feel like you, you couldn't fully comprehend it we were told that the ultimate aim is 
of the Generation 5 factory is that there won't even need to be any lights in the factory because it will be fully automated. At some point it will be Elon Musk's factory in a box type thing will be a reality. I don't have any doubt that at some point it will be very possible for that to happen. There aren't any people, you just put in your design files and you get out a thing. What do they think about the future social impact of that in China? A lot of their workforce is probably employed in manufacturing positions and being one of the, the, the most populous place in the world, what that means when those jobs go away because of automation. It'll be very interesting to see what effect that has because China's probably going to end up being the first to do it. I don't think any job's safe. It actually touches every aspect of our lives. The same thing is going to happen with artificial intelligence. It's coming and you can't stop it, basically. At the same time, we do need to think as a society about what that means and what that changing face of, of, of jobs and labour means. Artificial intelligence will fundamentally change the the landscape of all industries. And you can start to see now where we're heading to. The moment you order something, it gets made, it gets delivered to you. And you know, you can start tangibly seeing how nowhere in that process will there be a human. I, I really think the only jobs that are safe, and it's only for a short amount of time, is the ones that create the robots. I think creative jobs and problem solving jobs are the ones that will not be automated, at least certainly not in our lifetimes. The kind of skills you pick up in, in, in STEM classes where you're you know, given, here's a problem that we want you to solve, here's, uh, to design a machine to do X or, to, uh, or a program to do Y, we're a long way off and I don't think we ever really will be. We'll automate some of the things away and our tool chains will get easier and easier to use. If you want a job for life, study something where you're creative, where you're designing, where you're inventing, not something where you're doing a repetitive task. Even something like an accountant, things like that, uh, kind of less safe. It seems like the self-driving car is almost here. So we're, we're heading in towards things like autonomous vehicles, robot doctors. All kinds of aspects of human society will be impacted, could even be displaced, even the creative arts. Well, it depends how good your AI is. Everyone keeps telling me design jobs are safe, and I go, well, only because you haven't programmed an AI to learn how to design. Writing music, writing poetry, all these things can be done to some extent already with AI. People are always going to experiment with automation and the idea of things like a company that makes their burgers with robots is a novelty and it is maybe a glimpse of the future but it may just be a novelty. Closing the gap between those two things, between the novelty and the actual ubiquity reality of it may take again longer than we think. I've left leave previous positions because I automated enough of my work that I really didn't have to do much work. Where there's still a gap is uh, where tasks require a level of creativity or flexibility, dealing with the unexpected, and fixed, I guess, imperative software is now not, not proven to be uh, great at that, and uh, machine learning is, is now starting to fill that gap, but still, it's still early days. And so I think when it comes to, uh, say, job security, jobs that require, I guess, uh, an understanding of other people, so either from a, you know, from a, an emotional or caring perspective, or people that understand what people will desire or engage by, jobs that require incredible amount of, of flexibility or creativity, you know, thinking uh, thinking out of the box. I think this is where we, I guess, prefer to work with a, with a person. There's only so much you can do with, it, with an ATM. It's just nice. Sometimes it's nice to talk to a person to, to deal with your problem flexibly. It's interesting to see some of the types of jobs that machine learning really won't, or it doesn't seem to be about to take over. Things like childcare. Teaching is another good one. A lot of these are the areas where jobs will be safe into the future. You know, I read a lot of news online and AI is coming up a lot now and it's interesting, you know, lots of people think it's the process worker level that's going to get automated away. I think medical jobs are pretty safe. If you're saving someone's life, that's going to be pretty helpful. In the past, there's been this perception that some particular jobs, like um, being a surgeon or being a lawyer, are safe because those jobs are really hard to automate. You know, I'm already reading a lot about lawyers are at great jeopardy because it's really pattern matching from reading large data sets of previous cases etc. But the reality is now that with things like machine learning we're seeing jobs like legal research previously done by highly qualified people can now be done faster, better, cheaper by a computer. And so a lot of those jobs that traditionally we thought were very safe from being taken over by machines, they're now gone. I mean, you, There's no reason why you couldn't have an AI President of the United States, you could have an AI Prime Minister. I don't think we'll get to a stage where businesses are run by robots. You could have an AI policeman. You could, realistically, there's no job that's safe from AI. Very large swaths of the community will their their work will be automated away, and it is scary. It might be a while to get there, and you might not want to let this AI run that job, but 
is certainly no limit. If Hytera has their way, their manufacturing process will be automated. They've already got, you know, dark or black factories where, you know, there aren't any lights and the whole factory storage distribution process is automated. Amazon's working on drone delivery, driverless cars. When they were talking about, you know, Gen 5 factories, the penny just dropped that there won't be any people in this at all. I think there's a question that needs to be asked if we can automate it all, but should we? What does everybody do? is the, the, the really important question. I think that we'll find other activities, no doubt, that we consider to be productive, whatever they are, but they won't be what we currently do. Until the robots are smart enough to create the robots. <laughs> I think it's really interesting, the people that are starting to look at ideas like guaranteed basic income, the idea that, that we may be moving out of the world where everybody has to have a job because they just won't do enough. Whether that comes to pass or whether something different comes to pass, I don't know. So Simon made a great point when we were sitting at the LifeX factory saying that you couldn't automate this. It does really come down to what the design of the factory owner is depending on how they want to run their business and what parts automated. The step beyond from that is factories will thrive based on who gives them work. If there's a real need for automation within particular manufacturers then the people who are meeting that need will thrive. But there is a need for automation within factories because as a customer of manufacturers we are starting to demand higher quality which means lower error which means less people. We want things cheaper so we want to and you know they're, grow, they're growing middle class in China and so that they're you know rising wages and it's cheaper to you know in those kind of big cases to have you know automation of, of production lines so yes it's driven by the factory owner and they will drive that vision but that's pulled out of them by or the, they'll be successful by you know the, the kind of upstream need. I think AI is potentially a threat I also feel like at the moment there are plenty of threats to human well-being that don't involve AI. It seems like we have plenty of ways to make life on Earth unbearable just by ourselves with the level of technology we have now. But I do suspect that there will be people who continue to work and that AI and the automation of manufacturing will just be their tools. Anything is possible, we'll have to wait and see.